Hello and welcome to your Astrological Vibrations for Thursday, August 3rd, 2017 by Gaia Blooming. I am Mimi and our energy mantra for today is my joy connects me to the power of my innocence. And today we have the sun at 11 degrees through most of the day. 11 degrees is the healing degree and I feel like we're needing a little healing actually for our innocence energy and I actually have which I pulled this after I did the energy mantra I actually have the innocence card um, today that we are working into and I've said this before and I will keep reiterating reiterating this message I do feel like we have such strong Leo lessons right now going on because what the world needs now is love and that love is going to come when we heal the inner child, when we heal that innocence. A lot of people will get triggered by the inner child energy, and if you do, you, clearly there's something there to work on for you. Um, but maybe you need to tap into it and understand it as your innocence, and then go to that place. What in your innocence? How can you expand? How can you work into your innocence? The joy of connecting into your innocence, the power that is your inherent it is there and it is inherent, your inherent innocence that is you. Bring some healing, bring your, your focus, bring your alignment into that innocence energy. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of Leo energy going on right now, building into the first eclipse, the lunar eclipse in Aquarius. I will get into that a little bit more in the next couple days, um, but Today, we're building into that Jupiter-Pluto square, into that exact energy of that. We actually have that happening tomorrow on Friday, that we reach the exact energy of that square. And I feel like this is actually a portal <laughs> into understanding our innocence. I will show you two of my cards. I have innocence and I have this rebirth card, which again shows us that inner child energy, that innocence, that light energy. Jupiter in Libra is asking us to expand, to find the joy, to find the grace in our self-love practice, in our inner harmony. We cannot have outer harmony in the world when we are still battling ourselves internally. And we all do it at times. It happens. Now what came through today is that Pluto, Pluto is bringing that challenge. Pluto is bringing the shadow to that energy. I'll give you my real life example. So for me, um, I have where Jupiter is. I actually have Jupiter in the fourth house and where Jupiter is right now is in my fourth house. Um, so this is challenging my home, my family foundation, my mother. And my mother right now is the biggest challenge to my harmony. And that is also where I have to look at where that shadow, that Pluto shadow energy is bringing up my resistance, my resistance to this innocence, my resistance to that harmony within myself and showing me where I need to, <laughs> where I need to look into matters, where I need to look into where I'm feeding into that shadow instead of feeding into my innocence. So this is building. What is coming up? What shadows are coming up for you? You don't have to know your chart to know how to find those shadows. What are the things that are making you want to pull out your hair? What are the things that are making you, you know, go want to be like, I'm going to go hide in my room or I don't want to be around the people or ah, <laughs> look at those things. Those are the shadows that you can then work on and find your innocence. Find out what's going on with your inner child in and through this. And then you can move through the shadow by expanding your joy, by expanding your connection to that innocence and bringing protection to that innocence, bringing whatever need you need to do to step into the power of that innocence. Um, so this is a really powerful aspect. It does require us looking at the things, but you know, here's the thing. If you are feeling happy-go-lucky and joyful, don't worry about it. <laughs> you know, you're good. You're good. Don't worry about it. But if you are feeling that resistance, if you are feeling that shadow, look into it and then look deeper into that innocence and see 
What can you do to protect it? What can you do to heal it? What can you do to liberate it? It may not be protection. It may need some liberation. It may not be liberation. It may be a boundary. It may not be any of those things. You just may be a little bit out of alignment with it because you haven't been connecting into it. But this is an opportunity and it is an expansive one. And this will take you deeper into your power. I wanted to make um, the energy mantra today to be like, my joy connects me to the magic of my innocence because I really do feel like this will bring forth some divine magic it doesn't mean that you'll wave a wand and your unicorn will appear but hey you never know I'm not saying never because I don't say never to anything divine possibility you never know um, but I do think it is very potent now behind it which I think is feeding into this which is helping us get into those places that we need to look at those shadows we do have strong fire energy going on we have a wide Grand Trine in fire today. We have um, Saturn and Lilith, yes, and Lilith uh, holding space in Sagittarius. We have Uranus, newly retrograde in Aries. If you want to get into that, I suggest checking out yesterday's scope. I really liked it. <laughs> I think had a lot of good information. Uranus, newly retrograde, taking us into the truth of ourselves, into that innocence, the innocence of our I am vibration, the innocence of the mission the uh, the mission and purpose that we came into with the innocence of our authentic vibration, our authentic soul vibration. So we have Uranus retrograde in Aries connecting in, and then we have a whole bunch of energy in Leo, <laughs> the sun and Mars and North Node in Leo tuning into this. All of this fire may ignite fire energy, and fire energy can be passionate and like we go for things, we dive in, and it can also get ragey. <laughs> if you are finding that raginess, again, look into your innocence and see where some part of you may be trying to protect your innocence or trying to support and help your innocence because that's really the focus. That's where we're moving into the focus. So, Moon in Sagittarius. Did I mention that in Sagittarius? I said Saturn and Lilith in Sagittarius. I did not mention the Moon. We have the Moon finishing up in Sag Sagittarius today, and that Moon in Sagittarius is making all of the connections. Moon in Sagittarius is connecting to Saturn, connecting to the shoulds. It may be some of those shoulds that are making you get ragey. <laughs> um, but it doesn't have to be that way. That moon conjunct Saturn is at 21 degrees. And it's like you have yourself focused on this little box. Oh, you're focused on this little box. And yet there's this great big world. There are all these other um, options for you. Infinite possibilities. Infinite divine possibilities. And yet you're focused on this box. This box that feels like the shoulds. You do not have to be there. Liberate yourself. <laughs> the moon is also going to connect to Uranus. There we have the liberate yourself energy. Uranus is like, if it's not true to me, it's going away. It's just, I don't have room for it. I'm going to let it go if it's not true to me. <laughs> Thank you, Uranus. Thank you for that. Um, and Uranus is at 28 degrees. That connection is at 28 degrees. That is that worth degree. You are worth being true to the things that are true to you. Who is on your team? That's something Nikki, um, brought to me. She's like really noticing who or what is on your team. Is this should, is this belief on your team? It doesn't have to just be people. It can be ideas and thoughts. So that moon at the same time that it is connecting to Uranus will be squaring Chiron. And so Chiron also retrograde, Chiron retrograde in Pisces that may be bringing up some old stuff. And so all of this, all of this is like what I keep saying. We are unwinding to get into the truth of who we are. You are on the leading edge, my friend. <laughs> so this may be a time that this stuff, that uncomfortable stuff happens, that comes up, you know, to look at. And then it's like, and here it is. And here's the answer. And here's how you liberate. And here's the bigger picture that you can look at instead of getting stuck here in this energy. We then have the moon shifting into Capricorn. Moon in Capricorn is building us into that full moon lunar eclipse on Monday. Do you feel the lunar energy building? I feel it building. 
as it builds, it's going to bring up the feelings. And as those feelings come up, Capricorn may want to put a cap on it. It's like, oh, I cannot deal with these things right now. <laughs> you must deal with these shadow things that come up. You do not have to express them in a ragey manner, in a fiery, ragey manner. However, they do need to be Oh, I'm going to use my friend Alex's words. She's been, like, telling me all this week. Because Lala's been sick. She's like, you need to purge. You need to purge. You need to purge these energies. Um, and that's, again, part of that Jupiter-Pluto square energy. <sighs> I don't know why I wrote this down. But what I wrote down, and this is part of it. This is part of the Dance of Shadows and Light that we're really working with. With Jupiter, square Pluto, as we build into the eclipse, which brings us light and shadow at the same time. I wrote down one of my favorite poems. I believe I said it earlier this week. I am the darkness that is light and the stillness that is dancing. And that's going to be part of this balancing process as you keep reaching for your joy and yet still looking at the shadow energy that is coming up. Again, you can get into your power by your willingness to face these mirrors within yourself. No, I didn't actually pull this for everybody. I actually pulled this card for me, but it felt so appropriate. I was like, I'm going to read this for everybody. I have pulled from the Animal Spirit, Wild Unknown Animal Spirit cards. I pulled Snake for myself today. Snake, guardian of unawakened magic and creative potential. The snake is the symbol of our highest potential. It is said that Shakti, our creative life force energy, lies dormant at the base of our spine in the form of a coiled snake. Regardless of whether this image rings true for you, it's well worth considering the amount of unawakened or untapped potential within. What would life look like if you wake it up? How can you stir it from the slumber? An experienced yoga or meditation teacher can lead the way. Make haste. <laughs> the snake card appears when there's no more time to waste. And when snake is in balance, it's prosperous, creative, charismatic, out of balance, starts and stops many things. To bring into balance kundalini yoga, meditation, or even just sitting here and like snaking yourself <laughs> can do a lot of good to bring forth that energy. But this unawakened potential, it feels to me so connected to that divine innocence that we all do have within. Whether you consider yourself innocent or not, I promise you, your divine innocence is there. And the universe is asking us to touch base with that energy. Now, to finish up, I have actually two cards that came out <laughs> from um, 13 Moon. And the first is the Embrace card. And I feel like, and the second is the uh, Transcend. And it's funny, because this is the, Embrace is the frequency of Burgundy, and Transcend is the frequency of Violet. And I do feel these are both connected very much to inner child, innocence energy. If you look on this Embrace card, you have to look really closely, but there's a mom embracing a baby there. Um, and let's see. Receiving this card is a call to embodiment. The frequency, this is a frequency supportive of bringing your ideas and visions into tangible form. If, oh, this is really good for grounding. If your energy is spacey, uncommitted, or untethered, drawing this card invites you to buy a wine red rose or garnet to commune with the color frequency to receive its gift of grounding. Both exude a feeling of earthy, rich, substantial power. Garnet holds a powerful magnetic frequency, pulling awareness to the center like the womb drawing energy inward before a woman's moon. Before this, or receiving this card is a call to move inward, bringing your energy back to the center of the being. Unconsciously create from this place. Let's see. Burgundy is a frequency that emanates and feels like comfort and nurturing arms of a beloved friend's or mother's embrace. Embrace means stretching beyond your own edges or vulnerability to include. Ask yourself, what is calling for the gift of embrace or inclusion in my life at this time? To fully embrace requires impartiality, which is one of the three main tributaries, along with acceptance and equanimity, to freedom. What have you judged or separated from that is asking for impartiality? Um, embrace is a tool for continual expansion. Only in paradoxical relationship to impartiality does embrace take the depth of its actual meaning. Um, and so, like I said, I feel like, it's funny, burgundy is like root chakra and then violet's like crown energy. But what I was feeling with this is like bringing the form of 
burgundy, bringing that embrace to your inner innocence, to your inner child energy. And then this card, we talked about this a few weeks ago, um, the violet, the frequency of violet, compassion, forgiveness, clear awareness, and sensitize. I feel like this is like violet flame. So it's like embrace the energy of your innocence and then bring in the wisdom, call in the violet flame to clear away the energies that can be cleared by utilizing these energies. But it's this is a nice balance going on here too, you know, that we've got going on to help lead us. There's a lot going on astro-wise. We are, like I said, we're being called to the leading edge. We're being called to step up our personal, what is the right word? Our personal participation, but it's not really it. How we're showing up, you know, our how we're showing up in the world, our personal responsibility in in all things you know it's one thing to say i'm spiritual and it's a whole other thing to be doing the work and there is work to be done right now for sure so remember the path is the joy <laughs> the path to your healing the path to your greatness your path to your love the path to your desires is joy and right now your joy is the path to taking you back into your innocence because that is very important so just that. No la la today, but she's out in the living room. She has made the trek all the way to the living room. She's doing so, so, so much better. She still has healing to do, but again, thank you for all the prayers. She will be on camera one of these days. I know she won't be able to resist, but today she's like, no, I think she needs a bath first. She needs to get back into cleaning herself, grooming herself. But thank you for the prayers and the love. Much appreciated. Have a beautiful day, and I will see you tomorrow. Namaste.